All right, so how many of you have a name? Just by a show of hands, just put your hand up if you have a name. Wow, okay, that's a lot of you. Keep your hand raised if you have a first name. And keep your hand up if you've had that first name your entire life. Okay, so all of us have had our first name our entire life. So you're the same person. Not necessarily. This is known as the identity crisis. And philosophers have been struggling with this idea for many centuries. What is an identity? Are you the same person you've always been? And how does your identity change? The entire philosophical idea of identity has so many problems on its own. There's a very famous video game series you've probably heard of called The Legend of Zelda. And in this, this series of games, there are three characters who show up in every game. Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf. In this talk, I will be addressing the identity crisis, the questions I have posed using the video game series The Legend of Zelda. So. Let's just jump right into it. So the question we're trying to answer is, what defines a person as the same person through time and change? Now, one of the easy answers that most people tend to jump to is that it is the soul. The soul defines a person as the same person through time and change. What's a soul? It's intangible and undefinable. You can't define what a soul is. People say the soul because it's a common element that always persists. But there are so many problems with the soul. Plato himself thought plants have souls, rocks have souls. But with our 21st century modern day concept of the soul, that doesn't make sense. The soul cannot be defined as any one thing. Many people will say the soul is attached to the heart. But the heart is this beating thing in my chest that pumps blood throughout my entire body. Others say the soul is attached to the brain. But if your brain ceases to function, then doesn't your soul cease to function? If you go into a coma, then your soul also... It doesn't make sense. So we can't define it just as the soul. It, the soul is undefinable, and we cannot use it to define ourselves as the same person throughout time. It is not the common element that persists. Now, the next approach that most people will jump to is the physical approach. The physical approach is that DNA, or a person's physical body, is what makes them the same person over time. Now, the physical approach also has its problems. If you made a clone of somebody, they would have the same DNA, but they'd have different life experiences and memories. Now, Technically, though, by the physical continuity model, they are the same person. But that doesn't make sense. They're clearly not the same person. Not only that, but humans transition from having tiny bodies to large bodies, and our cells are constantly dying and being remade. And even if this is the right answer, it definitely does not apply to the Legend of Zelda series. Now, in the Legend of Zelda series, in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Link performs multiple spells that transfer his consciousness to a statue, to land on a different block, to move him through the dungeon, or to a bird so he can get up to high places to see things he couldn't see before. But if we go by the physical continuity model, the second that Link is disconnected from his body, he's no longer Link. Even though we're pretty much supposed to guess that it's still Link. Now, it's even more shown, this issue, this issue is more identified in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, where Link multiple times transforms between being a man and a wolf. If we go by the physical continuity model, each time Link transforms into a wolf, we have to assume that the wolf is no longer Link, despite his name literally being Wolf Link, which kind of seems to indicate that we're supposed to still think of it as Link. Now the next approach many people will jump to is the psychological approach. The psychological state of a person is what makes them the same person throughout time. Sounds nice, but guess what? There's issues with it. Um, one of the biggest um, people who believed this, one of the biggest philosophers who argued for this was John Locke, a 17th century English philosopher who believed that it was a person's memories that made them the same person. Since their memory is the only thing that remains consistent, it is the essential characteristic that makes the same person the same person 
through time and change. However, this has issues. A person at 20 may have memories from when they're five. A person at 50 may have memories from when they're 20. But a person at 50 may not have memories from when they are five. Therefore, we'd have to assume that these two people are not the same person. But that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It gets worse when you look at The Legend of Zelda. I know, surprising. In The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Link transforms multiple times between being his young self and his older self. He time travels much, very much to be able to save the realm. Now, imagine at some point in the game, older Link is going through a dungeon, and in order to solve a puzzle, he needs to know how to throw a boomerang, but he doesn't know how. Later in the game, but when he's his younger self, he learns how to use the boomerang. By this model, Technically, they're not the same link because they don't have the same memories. This, it cannot, not only can this be applied to The Legend of Zelda, but any time travel novel or movie you've ever seen, this can be applied to. Any, without a doubt. Once they time travel, change things in the past or the future or whatever, they can't be technically assumed as the same person. Now, many people argue that a hybrid of the two views, the psychological states are caused by the physical states. Uh, a hybrid of the two views is the solution, the perfect solution without any defects or problems. Yeah, right. Considering all the issues with both the physical and the psychological, it is very doubtful that a hybrid of the two would be any less problematic, if not more so. Now, there's a group of philosophers known as Muriological Essentialists who claim that since a person cannot have all the same attributes and qualities as, as a person at a past time, they cannot be the same person. An identity does not exist at all. Well, that's boring. This just seems like the easy way out. At this point, we've come down to three solutions. Three solutions for the Legend of Zelda series to apply that they are the same person. Now, the first of these solutions is that we can be like the mirrorological essentialists. We can just say, identity does not exist at all and you can't be the same person. Which would mean I'm not the same person as I was two seconds ago when I was just speaking to all of you. That doesn't make a sense. Clearly you have to think of me as the same person. The second solution for the Legend of Zelda series is that we could make an individual model for each of the games. For example, Ocarina of Time, when he travels between being his young self and adult self, we could use the physical continuity model since his DNA remains consistent. But for Wind Waker, we could use the psychological one since his consciousness is the thing we're associating as Link. However, a couple years back, we received an official timeline for the Legend of Zelda series, establishing that each game is, in fact, in the same universe. Therefore, that second solution, it doesn't work. It's invalid. It wouldn't make sense if it's all in the same world, all the games in the same world. So we're left with the third option. And this is the third answer that I think is much better. This answer relies on the concept of destiny that is omnipresent in all of the Zelda games. The three goddesses of Hyrule, Din, Nehru, and Furore, left behind a Triforce, which could grant wishes if the person who found the Triforce had a balance of wisdom, courage, and power. However, if they did not have that balance, they would only be able to obtain one piece of that Triforce. Many of the games start by describing a great evil. This evil is some form of Ganondorf, Ganon, Calamity Ganon, etc., who is portrayed as destined to have the Triforce of Power. And then there's a boy who is destined to thwart the evil because he is the embodiment of the virtue of courage. And of course, we can't forget the Princess Zelda, who is almost always, or rather should I say, always, 
the virtue of wisdom. For the three main characters, the destiny that they have is what picks them out as the same person within any given game and from one game to another. The destiny that awaits them is a necessary and sufficient function and condition, an essential element that allows their identity to persist. This account may also apply to non-playable characters such as Beetle, who's destined to help the hero, or various other characters. Now, admittedly, looking at destiny as a means to explain someone's identity is a very strange way to view it. This may make sense in The Legend of Zelda, but what about in our lives? How are we the same person? How does destiny function as a means to explain our identity? I mean, using philosophy to an example in a video game made by humans doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Does destiny function as a means to explain our own identity? That is up to all of you. Christianity has a belief that when you die, you go to heaven or hell. Perhaps in a way where you go could determine who you are. But maybe that's a stretch on my part. No matter what religion, gender, or culture you are or are from, it is up to you what makes you the same person or whether destiny even exists for you in your life. Identity is not something that can be easily explained. I hope that through this talk, you've learned a little bit more how confusing philosophy is and about who you are personally and about whether or not you have changed. Whether you believe that it is memory, the physical condition, or destiny that makes you the same person over time, or even that identity doesn't exist at all, or even if you just learned a little bit more about The Legend of Zelda, I thank you for listening to my talk. In the words of Sheik from The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, time passes, people move. Like a river's flow, it never ends. Thank you.